So to start with, all right, the Dunedin IAPS exhibition. Um, of course, I'm Richard McKinley, of course, I'm Richard McKinley, um, the current acting president of IAPS, the International Association of Pastel Societies. And joining me right now is uh, Red, Sue Red Weber, our executive director, extraordinaire. Um, Sue's the glue that keeps us all together, the, the hub of our wheel, so to speak. So all spokes lead to Red, and so I really appreciate everything that she's doing for us. And the three of you as jurors, we have Anna Wainwright. Hi, Anna. We have uh, Miles Johnson from beautiful Canada, our lovely neighbor up north and the, representing the pastelists of that area. And then we have Charles Pear. Charles, the guy with the lovely hair. If mine was only as nice as yours, I'd be happy. So that's beautiful. Um, let me explain just a little bit for anybody that is listening to this, and I know you're aware of our jurying process, which has evolved over the last few years, is that in watching what's been happening with jurying exhibitions over time, it seemed to us that it was becoming a little bit too much of just a numbers game. Um, and I've been involved in that. You get asked to give a number to each painting and then they just take a numeric algorithm and tell you what's in the show and go from there. That we thought it would be better with the quality of work being entered to work towards a more curated system to where you're looking at the whole body of work and then the three jurors coming together to do that. So we've implemented this three tier system that all of you just were involved in where the first aspect, you really are alone pretty much looking at the images, ranking them by number so that we can begin to whittle the pool down with the amount of entries that we have. And, and Red, how many entries did we have? We had um, over 1,900, just over 1,900, 1,904 entries for that show. And in some of our web shows, we end up with even more entries. So the task becomes even more daunting to do that. Now, in this show, we were limited to, what was it, 90? We were trying to keep it under 90, and we ended up with 86 um, total, plus your- uh, total. So a real daunting text, you know, to how, how are we going to whittle that down? So that's why stage one is kind of our numeric stage, where we're, we're really attempting to at least get it whittled down to a manageable number. And then as all three of you were involved, stage two is when you first come together and you're really looking at the individual artists because of the limitation of only one painting per artist. And several of the artists probably had multiple selections from some of you that would have been in consideration otherwise. And then stage three, to me, maybe for others is the easiest, but for me it's the hardest, is what makes it and what doesn't. And coming back and really saying we have to meet this target number of paintings, and that's a tough choice. So now my question to all of you is, how did that process go for you? Have you been involved in a similar process before? And what would you like to share about that as you all work together? Any one of you can speak. <laughs> uh, well, I can, I can start. It, it was my first time. And um, I, I thought that the, the third part of the, the uh, process was actually the most important part and where we, we, we really, deliberated a long time on all these paintings and tried to come up with just like you said which ones stand out amongst all these amazing paintings um and i think we 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 went back on choices too like where we had eliminated some paintings and then brought them back mm -hmm. at the end so had had it just been a number system we wouldn't have been able to do that mm -hmm. they would have been gone you know but then when you talked and you you know, analyze everything and you think about size like this. We were picturing these paintings on the wall mm -hmm. at in the gallery, not just as like you'd see, as you see them on the web now, it's much different than how we were picturing them on the walls and what they were gonna look like in person. So that that was a major consideration why, why we brought some paintings back and decided to let some go. Uh, so I, I found this whole process to be absolutely amazing and worth the time. We really put a lot of 
time into this, a lot, a lot of hours. We really wanted to make sure that we picked the right ones. No, oh, good, good. And Charles, Anna? I don't oh, think I can hear Charles. I think Charles needs to, to fix his audio. <laughs> we can't hear you, Charles, so go ahead, Anna. Well, I was just gonna um, reiterate what Miles said, I agree. I think it was a good process. It was a really learning experience, I think, for myself, um, looking at it from the other side as an artist and trying to appreciate, even to appreciate things that may not be your cup of tea, that may not be the, your favorite thing as far as art goes, but wanting to make sure that the show had had examples of all types of artists and all types of styles in it. So I, we were very much um, interested in that. And we worked on that, like Miles said, when we went back and forth with some that were in originally and then weren't by the end. Yeah, wonderful. Charles, do we have your audio? See, see if his mute. Charles, check your mute that. button at the bottom. And what about, oh. Rats. Well, I'm, I, I, we'll let uh, Charles kind of work on, on his mute button right now and see if we can get his audio back up. But And when he does, we'll go back and uh, let him address this. But right now, um, I'm, I'm just going to throw out to you, typically, you know, man, many of us have been in this position previously at different shows and different functions and some physically juring and judging and so on. But um, typically, what attitude do you like to bring to the process? Uh, do you try to stay, you know, we all say, oh, I, I don't want to bring my personal biases to the process. But as I like to tell everybody, we all are but human and we do like the things we like and that becomes part of it. So I know you, you know, how, how did that come into play in the conversations between all of you? Well, I think we wanted to make sure that there were, uh, there was a, a, an honest selection of paintings from the, the several numbers of wonderful paintings that we were looking at that actually gave a range because we were picturing the importance of trying to make sure that the show um, showed the public the different variations in pastel work. Um, I think sometimes people think that there's only one way to do a pastel and and then when they see all these different varieties and they get excited about them when they see them in person um and i think es especially with pastels there's nothing like seeing them in person um so that was uh, that was a big part of what we were doing uh in the end in the beginning i think you're you're looking first at technical skill you know who's who's got the chops and who can really pull it off. Uh, and then in the end, it became more a matter of seeing who kind of had that, they put that little special part of themselves into their work and it made them stand out from the others. Yeah, see that, that really is the interesting point in why we've worked hard to evolve to this point uh, and other organizations too in the during processes is, you know, 40, 50 years ago to date myself, we were anxious to have enough competent pastels to mount an exhibition. Wow. And now we're just looking at, at so much beautiful work and so much competence that those other factors come into play. And I, well, I was gonna bring those up. You know, we get to motif um, in part of that consideration and technique, like you just brought up, Anna, you know, and how much that factors in. And then, for myself personally, you know, I always, at the end of the day, kind of that third stage, the creative part, the art part of it, beyond just a competent painting when we have so many entries. So um, anybody want to add to kind of that perspective that you brought to the process? Charles? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. I can hear you, Charles. So. <laughs> well, I got out of the meeting and, and, and came back. So I'm glad no, to be good. back. We're glad you're back. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so I was kind of uh, not processing what you just asked me. <laughs> well, we, we're really discussing that as the three of you worked through the process, which we reviewed that, you know, what really were 
the aspects for you individually. We know that you work together really well as a team. I mean, I heard just wonderful things about you guys working together as a team. And like Miles said, really devoting a lot of time and effort, which is valuable to us in doing that. But, you know, was, again, motif and technique and creativity and use of the medium and stuff. How did those factor in in making those final decisions? Well, I think as Anna said, I heard her say, um, you know, the level of excellence in technique was just sort of the bottom rung of the ladder. And uh, I was just blown away with the uh, number of just really technically excellent pieces uh, in the show. And I think as we went through them, um, there were moments that just stood out to you. And I think those things that that resonated with me were that this artist not only had the technical skill, but they had found their own voice. And it was very personal and it was um, something unique. And it was, um, they were so comfortable with it that it almost seemed effortless. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so those pieces, no matter what the subject matter, no matter what the technique or style was, they oftentimes jumped off the page. Mm -hmm. uh, there were many, many, as we talked about several times, the three of us or the four of us, uh, there were so many pieces that were excellent and, and would receive um, accolades in many shows the competition was just so hard that we were down to minute little um, nuances yeah. in color or composition or, you know, one thing or another. And so uh, we spent, we did spend a lot of time. And, and I also want to just thank uh, Red and, and Richard and the board for allowing the three of us to do this. Uh, it, it was a great team. And I think as a team, we considered each other's opinions and brought to the table um, some really interesting discussions. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd like to address a couple of things you kind of brought up and, and maybe go a little deeper too, is that did it help in a way when you could see multiple images, that say the person had entered three paintings or two paintings even, because that comparison and why I asked that is just like you were saying when to me, that's where I always see the artist's voice then. You know, I can see an individual painting. Uh -huh. And uh, I know from my own experience, sometimes you just have some, you know, wow moment. But then compared to a body of work, mm -hmm. it, not so much there, you know. And then the, the second thing which you kind of bring up when you are looking, again, at color and even value relationships in this digital age, did it ever come up like maybe this person didn't photograph this well or maybe they tweaked a couple of buttons on there and did that inform your decisions as well? I, I think that definitely we had several discussions about I'm not sure this is photographed well. Um, you know, is it on um, a velvet velour kind of paper or is it just a fuzzy photograph? Um, yeah, and and some pieces weren't even cropped, uh, and and that affects your opinion of the whole work. It also, to me, helped us see. Uh, I mean, when we saw two or three or more paintings uh, of an artist, in trying to work for a well curated show, sometimes you'd say, well, two of these we would certainly one in the show, but which one is going to work better with the body of selected pieces? So, you know, you might w pick one color palette or one subject over another because of a, uh, trying to achieve that balanced curated exhibit. Miles, do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, maybe for um, just seeing multiple paintings. Uh -huh. Um, from the same artist. Uh, sometimes we would see a body of work and be like really wowed by it and all like several paintings could have gone in. And other times it was sort of like, oh, this person had a wow moment here. But then we would look at the other ones and we'd actually almost even be surprised that it was the same artist. 
because they were yeah. so different. So then you start wondering, did they get help? Did, was this done under supervision? And you, yeah, a lot of questions pop up, you know? Yeah. So it, so it could be a help or a hindrance, you know, really yeah. that perspective of when you see that, you go, is this the one-off fabulous piece? And, or you go, man, this, this person's a really even painter that has acquired a voice. That's really interesting. I think that it, it's something that's come up often too that people will ask, am I competing against myself if I add multiple images? But my personal feeling is in a curated show like this where the three of you come together and you're seeing that body of work, you aren't really, because at the end of the day, that artist can only have one piece. Right. And so I, I'm not putting words in all of your mouths, but it really sounds like you're kind of selecting this artist deserves to be in the show now, which one of these are we going to pick for the show? Um, Anna, do you have anything you'd like to add? I think that's exactly <coughs> how it happened. There were, uh, and I think that happens, must happen a lot. I don't know, I don't do it this very often. So I can only imagine that there are several pieces from certain artists that you can tell they're a competent artist and that there's, you know, then you just have to decide which one's the best one. But I also, I always kind of put it back on myself and I think about when I enter a show and, and I, and I, you know, I go, wow, you can really hurt yourself if you're not careful. You don't want to just throw everything you have in the room on, on into a show. And then those questions I think can come up with any juror whether whether you really understand yourself as an artist or what you're doing and um that can affect your opinion it doesn't always affect your opinion but it can um and you wonder w where they are at in, in their journey mm -hmm. in expressing themselves um and it, certainly if, if anyone looks at this from the perspective of trying to figure out how they get into shows they, they need to consider that when they're doing it. And, and it, you know, growing as an artist, you have to come to a point where you understand what your best work is. And I think that's kind of expected of you, especially when you're talking about an international show, uh, uh, you know, that is supposed to be a selection of the best in the medium. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's that wonderful perspective that when when you do this with a group, you know, if you mention very famous artist names, you say Van Gogh, something pops in your head. And although we know throughout his life, he did a multitude of different, again, motifs and worked in different techniques and stuff. So that voice, it sounds like really is a pertinent part of the process here. Um, in a way, you've all covered this, but if someone would like to address the, the point of at the end of the day, though, how were those hard decisions made? You know, I mean that, you know, it's like the, even a, a jury in, in a law case, you know, you're all sitting there as those jurors going, all right, we have to decide, does this painting in a way live or die? And, uh, you know, how did you guys go through that process? I, I just blamed Charles and Miles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm with you. I would just blame the guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow. She uh, did though. Yeah, well we had we had um we would star certain certain paintings that we weren't sure of. We're like we're, we don't want to eliminate this yet, so we would put a star or a number next to it mm -hmm. and then come back to it and come back to it and and it was just a really came down to uh, a process of elimination for those last few that do get in yeah. but we we really did communicate like I, I can't like we were talking about this last night the three of us and how how happy we were to have worked together because we, we just it was just like a great match we're all friends now we're planning we're, a reunion it's interesting you bring that up because part of this concept that you were all working in was born out of something that happened to me a long time ago and asked to be, uh, PSA used to have a panel of three judges that would show up at the show. And uh, when I had been asked and did not feel qualified to do it, but you show up when you're asked, we were handed different colored dots and we were 
encouraged to not communicate in the beginning, to just walk around and place a dot when we thought a piece had merit in the show that would be under consideration for an award. And, and you start noticing dots, you know, but you kind of think, well, I don't know what they were, you know, why would, why would someone like that piece? And then you'd notice you were the only one that had a dot on other pieces. Mm -hmm. Then we came back together and we walked around with the physical paintings, but it was that dialogue that is really making me happy to hear that, you know, all of you giving that person a chance to sometimes advocate. It, it opened me up in that experience. I saw what the other judges saw and all of a sudden just got really excited about it. And then I was capable of doing the same things. You know, I would start explaining why this piece was so special to me and they'd go, oh, yeah, I'm on board with that, you know, and I thought that's a wonderful way of approaching this. So I'm thrilled to hear that from all of you. I, I would, I would uh, tag on to what Miles said is that to me, the uh, process with these three in red felt very organic. Mm -hmm. um, at no point were we at any kind of impasse. Mm -hmm. um, we, we did have some disagreements about certain pieces and, and we talked through those. And like you said, Richard, um, you know, sometimes all of a sudden you saw a painting in a whole new light mm -hmm. and gained that appreciation for it. Um, that I thought that I thought it was so interesting comparing the first week from the third week because the first week, no vacation, <coughs> you're going through hundreds and hundreds of these things. And, and in the back of my mind, I was going, I wonder what the other two jurors or uh, how they're marking these or what they're thinking. And, uh, yeah. and then when you saw those results, it, it was interesting, yeah. um, very enlightening, uh, both about the work in front of us, but then also about yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, that's why that's why we've we've worked to try to keep that first stage a little bit more individual is so that you have not the influence really to even know that somebody else really liked this and then you know we're all human and so you end up with the two extreme personalities the insecure one goes well what didn't i see i'm sure you know and then the other one goes oh they're full yeah, yeah that, that's what so i i love hearing that in, in, uh, in wrapping up, though, I'd just like to ask each one of you if you do have any parting words for both the people that made the cut and were accepted and those that deal with rejection, as we all do. And again, as these numbers get big, I mean, you know, people go, oh, you never get rejected. You go, no, it happens all the time. So any little parting words of wisdom? <laughs> Miles, you look like you're going to jump in there. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. I guess I think be, like we, we did speak about not putting more too many paintings in. I think that's a, I think you really do have to choose the right paintings to submit. But I, I would also say that it is good to submit multiple because it does force us to look at more of your work. It makes us look at not just one painting and then you know, out of 1900 paintings that we had, we could easily be skipped over by accident. So, you know, so I think it is good to put in multiple, you, but you do have to, to choose your paintings mm -hmm. properly that, that, you know, that look at having a voice was really important to us, uh, being unique, bringing something new to the table. Uh, if you can do that and build a, a you know, two to five paint because there are people were submitting up to five paintings mm -hmm. you can put a, a nice little um compilation of paintings together that have your show your voice and, and are consistent mm -hmm. um i think it's good <laughs> great great charles i i think that uh, that's good advice miles and i but i think you need to uh, make sure that they are uh true to you um, so that it's not just a flash in the pan painting, that this feels like um, maybe the best of what your goal is. And, and if you've got two or three or four to put those in. But I also think that um, because we all deal with the, that rejection note that comes uh, and, and that can 
be discouraging, especially when you don't know why. Um, so I would say find people that you respect to communicate with and uh, support each other. And, you know, it, it is tough when you get those notices, but I, I keep thinking, well, damn, damn I got to get the studio and get better. Mm -hmm. um, and, and set that as a goal. Yeah, great. But yeah. there was there were just so many excellent pieces. Yeah. yeah. Anna? Well, it, that's a tough crowd to follow. I think they covered pretty much everything I was thinking also. Um, and honestly, I think that it, it really is an eye opener to do this as a juror, to see and really think about, wow, you know, I didn't, you know, I start questioning going, wow, I should have thought of that before. And, and then when you start realizing what a juror has to look at and is looking at, and you, and you, I think it is important to take the time to perhaps look at previous shows, perhaps try to figure what judges are looking for, but not only do what you think they want to see, because sometimes the, jewel of a show can be something is so totally different from what everyone else did mm -hmm. and um, unexpected. And I think the unexpected can really make you shine when you go through a process like this. Obviously, everyone needs to have a certain level of skill, but I think unexpected is wonderful. Yeah. yeah and I, I, I think it's an interesting perspective all three of you are hitting on too, is that people sometimes forget that who they are as an artist, they can be very good, can have mass appeal in a broad public and be very successful. But in the art community, you know, we, we see a lot of art. You know, we see a lot of, again, certain motifs and popular techniques and that that becomes part of it. Well, I, I, parting, I would just say that we greatly appreciate the diligence that all of you put into this, but above all, the humility you brought to the process because that really touches me personally as an artist that there's that humbleness that when we are put into these positions you know it's the old saying that i'm here and i have to do this but really who am i to sit in judgment of anyone else's painting and when you bring that dedication to what you're doing which is what i've heard from all of you and i see in the end results i i just want to acknowledge that with all of you um, and uh, my favorite saying to people, and it's uh, what dear artist friends and I, we practice is, when you get rejected, you get to mourn for one day. <laughs> yeah. Curl up, you know, fold up your pastel palette and just be sad and then get back to work. And when you're accepted, you celebrate for one day. And then the next day you're standing there again in front of a blank surface going, what do I do? So it's part of our journey. And uh, thanks a lot, you guys. Um, be well, checking out the, the content that's coming out and any little parting comments you'd like to make, please do. I think speaking for the three of us, I want to thank Red for all of her help. And in, in oh, we've never been able to navigate it. Uh, oh, my goodness. Unbelievable assistance. And, and thank you to you as well, Richard. And uh, and, well, and Shirley, you know, and Shirley, the head of exhibition. I mean, yeah. this really, and Joe Baker. I mean, it really yeah. is a wonderful committee and team. And as I said, we've learned that Red is our glue and our. <laughs> the, she's the hub of the wheel. So <laughs> we love Red. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say that when when I get rejected, um, I think that's a great time for looking at your own work and really figuring out. Okay. Uh, you know what, I got to look at this again. And, and it's a really great chance to, I, I actually need to be rejected sometimes to give me that kick to go back in there and start analyzing what I'm doing instead of getting comfortable with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think a rejection is a bad thing necessarily. You know, and it, it reminds me of something that a mentor said to me once too, is that if you, if you constantly look inward, and there absolutely are times to figure out what it is you're doing wrong, but also own who you are and realize it's not for everybody sometimes, and that is art. So it's gonna come with it. Miles? Yeah. Um, well, 
speaking of rejection, another thing that I would say is also sometimes you get what, what I, what I realized with this, cause I've been rejected in many competitions, you know, and, uh, how close some people are to getting in and they don't know that. Yeah. You yeah. know, and why they got rejected is not because they weren't good enough. It's maybe because there was another painting that was too similar. Mm -hmm. And we chose that one for a reason, not necessarily because it's better, but because it fit with the vision of our, of what we wanted to show as a whole exhibition, you know? Yeah. So that's another thing. Don't get discouraged because you don't know how close you possibly were to getting in. Yeah. Yeah. We'd love to it's tell you, but we can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I love that you're all sharing that. And that's why we wanted to work on this project is that I think it's so valuable for people to hear, you know, the, these comments, because sometimes you think you do take it just you and you're doing something wrong and you don't know why and to realize what's involved in the process and that we all go through it. And it's all part of that journey. So I'm, I'm going to say thank you, and uh, we'll follow, be following up with all of you and uh, sharing this with the art community. So again, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Yep. Yeah. Be, be well, everyone. Be well. Thank you.